What's up everybody? Welcome back to another one. Today we're going to continue on with making our coonskin cap. So let's hop into it and we'll get into today's video. Alright, starting off here as you can see, uh, using the coon that we actually took the front part of the hat out of. So this piece right here in the front, that is that same rectangle right there and so we're going to cut out the very top portion of the hat right below that so we're just going to keep that fur right in line and if you have enough forethought whenever you're making your template <coughs> try and keep your center and your back here just so maybe you can line it up right here with this tail uh, kind of get you a little more centered keep it kind of center of uh, that front piece also that way, all your hair should fall straight in line. Uh, I'm going to have to measure that in just a second to kind of give me an idea of where I need to be. I'd say I'm pretty close. Uh, I may just roll with it. But uh, you're also going to need your straight razor blade, uh, your tanned coon hide, and of course we got some clips over there waiting for us whenever we get into the sewing portion of this. Uh, if you didn't watch the first video, uh, you should probably do that just to get your... Uh, templates made and then I'll go ahead and drop the links down below for all the things that you're going to need in this video uh, to go ahead and do all your cutting for all your pieces that you're going to need to make your own hat. So let me find an ink pen here and we'll get right into it. All right, got my pen. Also went ahead and measured out, and I found the center right there on the coon hide. And then I went ahead and scribed being a line down the middle here. So we should be able to line up those points on the template and get at least pretty well close. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, this hide's going to stretch over time anyway, so it's not ever going to be just perfectly uh, in line. And you're going to want to take your pen just going to want to work around the outside of your template try and make a line you may not be making one I may have to actually just scratch one in uh, just kind of lightly work it around with the razor blade without actually cutting that should work also just as long as you can see the line whenever you actually go to cut through with the razor blade and make that mark close to what your template is. So there you go, you got your oval there kind of scratched in. And then with our razor blade, of course, like I said in the last video, you don't want to be pushing down on the hard surface. That's why I'm doing it on the kitchen table. You know you're not going to want to cut a big old oval on your kitchen table. So I'm just going to show you what we'll do is we'll take the point of that razor blade, we'll break it through. And we'll just make a bunch of small pushes all the way following that line all the way around until we make our cutout. So we'll start that. If you're ever afraid that you might slip whenever you're pushing error on the on the uh, side of cutting your template too large you can always go back and trim that out versus if you cut it too small 
Uh, you're stuck with whatever you cut your leather at because you can't add it back on. Also, don't feel like you have to just really poke all the way through. You just need enough razor blade to get through that leather. That's probably actually better if you don't cut all the way in with your razor blade, just in case you are going to nick those hairs. Whereas if you just put a little bit through, you're just pulling out exactly what you need. And then boom. Just like that. You have your top piece cut out and all your hair runs the same way and it'll run right down the top of this hat that way it'll blend right in so now I'll get all my stuff moved around here and we will start sewing this dude in all right, I've inverted the hat that I had up to this port, and then I went ahead and placed the top that we just cut out in there. And then I saved you all the terrible trouble of watching me put all 16 of those paper clips on there. And if you watched my first video, you know I said if you have any little bit of hair sticking up through the gaps, you don't want that in there. And something I just figured out is if you take a butter knife, it will very easily slide in between there and just tuck all that right down in between those two seams so that's a little pro tip you get from watching this video is definitely tuck all that hair in keep it nice and clean like i got it there and then it will make your life stitching a whole lot easier because we're going to have to do all this all the way around by hand unless you want to uh, spend the money and invest in a leather sewing machine, which I have seen a few on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. Don't know how they work personally, uh, but I guess if you were gonna make a bunch of these, I you would go ahead and invest in one of those, I would assume, and it would make your life a whole lot easier than trying to hand sew these. So I'll gather up the needle and thread, get the camera repositioned, and I'll start in showing you how to make some seams like this all the way around. Okay, so if you have went ahead and got the same uh, kit that I did off Amazon that's linked down below, you're going to have uh, what they're calling this is a repair kit, most likely is, uh, but you're going to have a packet like this that's got a multitude of different uh, types of needles in it. So you're going to want to pick uh, a needle that you're most comfortable with. Uh, when I first started, I started with one of these like circle hoops, like kind of like a vet, uh, 
needle whenever you're putting in stitches and whatnot. I thought that would be the best thing to use on this leather. And it made my life way harder. Uh, I ultimately ended up just going back with the Plano straight uh, point needle. And then it also comes with a multitude of different waxed string. And uh, you just kind of run that through. I would recommend not trying to do this all at once with a very long piece of thread. Um, two big reasons. One, you're going to have a ton of line that you're pulling through each hole every time you do this. And as I get into explaining that more, you're going to understand why you're not going to want to do that. Also, uh, in the event that this does come unstitched in the future, and if you are trying to repair it, it'd be a lot easier to uh, just repair a portion of it versus the whole stinking thing. Uh, you might be able to catch it early enough that you can tighten it down and then you'll still be stitching a small portion. Uh, but if it just unravels one little spot, why? then you've come out ahead because it didn't keep going throughout the hat. So whenever you make your initial uh, push into the hat, of course, try and get all that down. I am trying to maintain a distance low enough from the edge that you won't pull through the leather whenever you're stitching or whenever you're pulling on the hat later whenever it's done. Uh, but at the same time, you're not wanting to come way down low where you have a whole lot of leather that you're trying to go and use a lot of the line and uh, you're trying to make it like a cleaner edge so I uh, just kind of eyeball it I'm probably gonna go about there I don't know maybe about an eighth I've always had to use this thimble that comes along to get it really pushed through there because it's other stuff Just get that started through and then whenever we do our first initial knot I simply just use a fisherman's knot or like an improved clinch knot uh, I figure if it's strong enough to hold most fish whenever you're fishing it's probably strong enough to hold your hat or at least for a starting stitch so just tie it on like fisherman line So I go on ahead and tie it off that first knot and then from here on out it's going to be the exact same process so I'll show you once and then I'll save you the boredom of watching me go all the way around this dude and I'll bring you back whenever it's finished but what you're gonna what you're gonna want to do is move over and then get you in, make sure that you're down far enough kind of try and keep all these at the same level like I've done along here as you go around but get your initial push through and then come around and then what you're gonna come again back through that same hole where you made that first push go through it again Ugh. pull it tight and then move on to your next hole. That way you got a double stitch there. It's going to keep everything tight, uniform, and then we can just move on around the hat. And we'll ultimately have something that looks like this whenever I bring you back. So we'll keep on going and we'll have us a hat in just a second. All right, everybody. She's not quite done yet. I've only got about half of it sewn, but you can see this is the part that I've sewn, and these seams just line up real nice. Like I said, I want the hair to come up in the front, then come back down the back, and meet up in the back. And it does that, and it makes it really seamless, and it fits pretty good. Uh, I've only made it about halfway, almost exactly halfway actually. Uh, and I'll finish that up in just a second, but I wanted to get this video out today. Uh, some of these fuzzies, like I can maybe show you right there, there's a little bit of hair coming off. And that's just because you probably cut some of these hair and it's just intertwined with hair that's uh, actually still attached. Um, I'm just going to take a vacuum to it and it'll be ready to go. But 
it moves it seamlessly uh fits right together and it really looks like true trapper's hat so i'll finish this up you'll see it in the next one because in the next one we're going to start putting a liner in this bad boy and we'll start doing that and then get it sewed in and it'll be done so thanks for joining me as always everybody uh, i hope that you're liking this series uh, share it with your friends uh, let me know if you're going to do it yourself. Uh, if you are, what you going to use? Are you going to use beaver? Are you going to use coon like me, coyotes, fox? Uh, just leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Uh, but that's it for today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.